Hi guys, Tyler here with Explorer Scientific. Make sure you tune in this Friday at 4 p.m. Central Standard Time for a live Q&A with our very special guest, Mr. Gary Palmer. We're going to discuss whatever topics that you have, whether it be troubleshooting your equipment, how to fix back focus, how to use a cork, chromosphere, or anything that you have issues with, whether pre-processing, post-processing, or just equipment setup. We're here to guide you and give you the answers that you've been looking for. Again, my name is Tyler with Explore Scientific. Can't wait to see you on Focus on Astrophotography. Day and I am not Annie, nor am I Scott. Annie is home with a illin child, and Scott is traveling, so I stepped up to the plate to be the pinch hitter. I'm going to try and hit a single and get on base, and that's going to be it. I am not swinging for the fences today here on uh, Explore Alliance. So Scott has written a new blog post. I want to talk about it real quick. So. Uh, we're on the Explorer Scientific page, homepage, and to get to it, we're going to go to, real simple, Explore Alliance, and we're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom and keep going all sorts of information there about Explore Alliance and keep going down and down and down, and I just missed it. And there we go. There's the blog posts. How to choose a good first telescope, choosing by aperture. He's going to be writing a series of these, and he's going to be choosing by aperture right now. Let me make – I'm working on it. And here we go. So here's his blog post. How to choose a good first telescope. Let's talk about Explore Alliance first. The Explore Alliance is a membership-based program that offers a host of benefits uh, to people uh, who participate. There is a legacy level, which is a free level. There's also a paid level called the platinum level. And with that, you get a whole lot of benefits. And I'll let you uh, go to the website and explore those benefits. Or we'll do it here in a minute. Uh, we can do that after we talk about the blog post. Uh, the price for the paid membership is $99.99 a year. And so it's an annual membership. And those benefits renew on renewal. And we have an auto renewal program you can set up for. And when you purchase a platinum membership, the cool part about it is you spend $99.99. And a few days later, we'll send you a $100 gift certificate for Explore Scientific products here on the website. So you get your money back plus one penny more for your troubles. So there you go. Uh, that's the Explore Alliance. We'll talk about that here in a couple uh, minutes. Martin Eastbaum, we're looking down the barrel of investing 97, moving up the coast and moving northward. Expect an inch. Uh, not sure what you're talking about, Martin. Looks like you may be moving northward. That'll be cool. So how to choose a good first telescope. Scott talks about, uh, you know, choosing by aperture. I'm not going to read this, but he focuses strictly on how big a round uh, and the the issues of what that effect is. So uh, he uses M42, uh, the Great Planet Nebula, probably one of the most photographed things in the sky besides the moon, probably. Um, so it's uh, 1,344 light years away, as Scott talks about. And... His first experience when he was two nope. years old. Mike, you have the right live channel. Yeah, oops, Mike. I guess I'm not watching the On the Wing. No, well, On the Wing, Mike, has uh, transitioned uh, on Thursdays. Uh, it was just uh, too much work for me to get everything done. The, having multiple live broadcasts on Thursdays just became a very difficult challenge, and we've folded on the wing as a 4 p.m. broadcast we have folded it into my 1 30 
broadcast that starts out on social media and then flows into the uh, Amazon Live broadcast. We talk about five or six birds uh, during the hour. We also talk about binoculars and spotting scopes and, you know, why to do birding, how you do it and when to do it and things like that. So we've modified that a little bit. It comes on at uh, 1.30 on the social media, then switches over to Amazon and also side broadcast on to uh, the social media platforms as well. And this is now an Explore Alliance uh, broadcast. So um, Scott talks about uh, aperture and the effect it has on what you're viewing. Nice blog post there. Let me scroll down a little bit. Uh, so there's some simulated images uh, that shows uh, of aperture and its effect uh, with um, uh, magnification, obviously. Uh, M42 is a great thing to look at. You can't see it right now. It's not up yet, but it will start coming up uh, as we move into fall. So his advice and conclusion is, if you're choosing your first telescope by aperture and wish to primarily uh, explore the universe with your own eyes, then he suggests you buy the biggest aperture telescope you're willing to transport to a dark site. Uh, that is within the budget you can allow. It's always a balancing act. You know, your budget allows certain things. What are you going to get? Well, you might be able to spend more money on one thing and less on another. It, it's just a, a balancing act, right? Uh, generally speaking, this should give you the greatest visual satisfaction in astronomy for your investment. So, obviously, Newtonian telescopes uh, fit that bill for lar large aperture and easy, easy to transport if they are like a trust tube design like we sell. Sadly, we're out of those trust tube telescopes right now. More are on the way. We will be having them back in stock going into the fall. We're excited about that. Always big sellers. It looks like we're going to have stock going into Christmas. So those will be a good uh, telescope. Now, you can get a Newtonian telescope with a solid tube. Those can get pretty large. And with people's cars getting smaller, transporting those becomes more of a problem. Likewise, Large refractors can be very heavy and very long as well. Hard to transport as well. So we're going to do a little F11 to get the back button here. And we're going to go back to the blogs here. Great North American Solar, Solar Eclipse. Scott's written that. Uh, a lot of facts there on the eclipse coming up. Now, we're going to be announcing a series two uh, solar star parties. Uh, eclipse star parties, crossroads of the eclipses, star parties. Uh, we've identified a site uh, where uh, for the annular eclipse, we're less than half a mile from the center line. And for the total eclipse, we're like five miles from the center line of the total eclipse. The annular eclipse is in October of 2023. The total eclipse is in April of 2024. And as uh, you know, April in the United States can be pretty cloudy. The farther south you get, tends to be better chance of having clear skies on the day of the eclipse. We are going to offer a star party that uh, around the eclipses, uh, the annular won't be huge bad traffic, but the total eclipse absolutely will let me have terrible traffic. Our plan is to have a place, going to be dry camping. It's going to be a little bit rough in it, but... Uh, you're going to have dark skies, Bortle 2, maybe top end Bortle 1 skies. Uh, very dark. Uh, SQM meter readings uh, uh, near perfect. Uh, so it's going to be a great place to have a star party and, uh, leading up to the eclipse, then the day of the eclipse. Stay there. Don't try and get out in the rush of traffic to get back you know, onto the interstate and get yourself home. We know what happened in many places. Uh, after the uh, eclipse happened in 2017, hours and hours and hours and hours and sometimes half a day of gridlock traffic. Uh, why have that stress and worry? Just hang around and have another evening, pleasant evening in Texas Hill Country. Uh, we'll be having more details of that coming up. So there's some information you can get on uh, the eclipse. So let's talk about Explorer Alliance membership benefits here real quick. Uh, how do I want to do this? Let's go to 
uh, about Explorer Alliance. I think that's where it is. This is not going to have the benefits. We have an events and experiences. There we go. Uh, legacy membership gives you free, uh, allows you to sneak peek at prizes, VIP access to events. Um, you can rent first look telescopes. So let's just click join now and see what happens. Learn more about the Explorer Alliance. There we go. All right, so here we go. This is going to give you a uh, platinum membership is the one where you pay for it. Uh, membership provides extended care plus no call fault coverage for your purchases from Explore Scientific. That $100 covers all of your gear with extended care and no fault coverage. Uh, we send back that $100 in a gift card. Uh, we also have contest prizes, sneak peek with events, purchase discounts of new products, explore care and discontinued access, or excuse me, discounted access to Explore Alliance events. So there you go. Uh, that's what the Explore Alliance is. I know Andy's been working hard. We also send out a, a frameable membership certificate. Uh, the Annie's been working hard to get those caught up. I'm not sure exactly where she stands on getting that stuff done. Let's see what else we've got. Uh, Arizona Dark Arizona Sky Star Party. You got that video queued up? Well, it's just Scott. Well, it's just Scott talking about the Arizona Dark Sky Star no, Party. No, I don't have the Se video queued up at the moment. Okay, September 21 through 25 in Oracle, Arizona going to be a fantastic time uh there's no hotels in oracle we have reserved the biosphere too and you can purchase rooms there through us uh and it's a dormitory style sort of a central area with rooms off of it and there's some bunkhouse sort of uh situations as well uh, pricing is all the same 512 dollars for all the nights but works out to like 110 dollars uh, to stay there. So it's 10 miles away, an easy, easy drive. Here we go. Uh, there's also be camping in Oracle State Park. Uh, it does not allow uh, RVs. We have gotten special dispensation for a couple of RVs that Scott and I and a other, another person are going to be basically staff members will be using there. There will be water, but nothing else. But what it does have is really really dark skies uh, yeah. oracle is northeast of tucson arizona blocked by a mountain range so you don't get a lot of glow uh from the lights in tucson uh you want let's me to see play the thing? david lee david levy will be there say what do you want me to play it absolutely play it okay go to eight, eight. Eh. Why does it always turn the sound off every time? I don't understand. Uh, this silly thing. It's the sound. Where is it? So Scott's not talking. Dot com forward slash events. And I couldn't. All right. If you're in love with the stars, you love the Milky Way, and you want to be out with astronomers under a really dark sky, come to the Arizona Dark Sky Star Party with Biosphere 2. It's going to be amazing. It'll be at Oracle State Park, Oracle, uh, Arizona, and we're going to have music, stars, astronomy, door prizes, a lot of fun. Come to explorescientific.com forward slash events and sign up. And there we go. Thank you, Scott, for that. I couldn't hear Rousing it. I was trying to read his lips. So anyway, uh, we're going to have birding events. We're going to have lectures. Uh, Scott's working on some uh, uh, musical performances. It's going to be a festival atmosphere. You can go to our website and find the and search for Arizona Dark Sky Star Party at $149 uh, to attend the event plus obviously food and lodging will be extra you're going to have a great great uh time um at the event mike overacker when i get the dob 20 converted over to go to and tracking people might want to see that yes mike people will love to see a tracking uh go to dob in fact i got a person who's working on that i'm gonna email you after i get off the show 
and see if you can answer some of their questions. Uh, they're trying to get one built and have some questions for us. So I, I'm going to email you here um, here in a few minutes. Uh, in Oracle, Mike Wiesner says, ranches in Oracle also have rooms. There's all sorts of Airbnb and, and bed and breakfast around plenty of places. And, you know, it's a Oracle is a cool tourist town, has all sorts of little attractions. I am looking forward to getting there. Uh, we were in Karshner Caverns the last time we did this in 2019. And uh, uh, nice dark skies, had four nights of beautiful weather. Uh, it was spectacular. And uh, I can't say enough about the dark skies in Arizona. That's why lots and lots of people move there who love to do astronomy because there's desert air, clear uh, monsoon season obviously brings clouds, but uh, when it's clear, it's dark and it's clear and a spectacular place to do astronomy. My wife hates the country out there. So I'm, you know, she's been to Tucson uh, with my son to play football a few times. And is like, nope, not going to live there. Uh, so that's probably not my cards, but who knows? Uh, maybe I'll bonk her in the head and she'll get some sense, you know, come to her senses, understand how beautiful it is in its own way. Uh, Mike Wiesner also says, Oracle State Park is an IDA, International Dark Sky Association, International Dark Sky Park. Uh, it is uh, has lighting regulations and uh, does regular outreach and qualifies for that status because of their efforts to uh, uh, maintain dark skies within the park, educate people outside the park, and it is blessed to be located in a dark sky location. So... Um, without time to prepare, I've covered everything I well, want to talk well, about. How about if, now there, is there anything new coming down the pike? Um, to find new. Well. I mean, new products? I can't talk about pieces. new products. Well, no, in the th not secret stuff. I mean. Uh. We have uh, the reflex site, then bring it over here, the new uh, zero power reflex site is a spectacular uh, device. It is uh, the reflex site is right here. Uh, there it is. You can see it. It is. Uh, uh, we're selling it like hotcakes. You know, when you come out with a new item, you think, okay, how's it going to sell? You make a forecast. You hope to hit that forecast. So we brought in a case of these, air freighted them in, figured they'd last us, you know, a month. We put them up on a website on a Thursday, and by Monday morning, we were sold out of that case of them. Uh, we got two more cases in, and we sold through those in like two weeks. Uh, this has proven to be a very popular item. It's on sale right now for $69.99. That price is going to be going up very, very soon. Uh, probably when I get back from my vacation over the 4th of July, uh, it will be rising to its regular price of $79.99. So if you want one, not nod, nod, hint, hint, wink, wink, go ahead and get one ordered. Uh, the multi-dot reticle it's not red lines. It has little dots in circles, and it has the standard four degree, two degree, and half a degree circle pattern with a rheostat that you can turn it way down and make it really easy to see the stars you're trying to find. Uh, and for those of you who don't know, that half a degree central circle is the size of the full diameter of the moon. Uh, obviously, the full moon or a new moon because the moon has the same diameter, uh, give or take. So fits on most... Uh, telescopes in the dovetail finder foot that's there. It'll fit on either the two-in-one hybrid foot that we sell and come now comes standard on most of our telescopes or on the mini dovetail that comes on other brands of telescopes. So basically, when you buy the um, uh, Explorer Alliance membership, this is basically free, right? It's not basically free. It's free. And you still have, you know, 30 bucks left over. Well, you have to pay $10 of shipping. So, you know, you have to pay for shipping on top of that because it's under, you know, our shipping levels. But, yeah, 
uh, it's free at that point. You, so you buy the membership, get all the benefits of membership, and you get that money back to spend on an item you really want. And I'm going to suggest you buy yourself one of these right here. Uh, the Multi-Tier Planisphere uh, by Will Terrian is a very popular item. We sell a goodly number of those as well. And those are a nice item to have. They're good for anywhere from zero degrees latitude up to 60 degrees north. I'm going to venture that probably covers about 95% of people who live in the northern hemisphere. Because you get to, I think it's 66 degrees is where the Arctic Circle starts. So uh, wherever that number is, not that many people live close to the Arctic Circle. Uh, so Question let's see. for you here, Mr. Yes. Mike Overracker. Is it that much better than the Telrad or Rigel Quick Finder? Mike, I can't tell you that. That's a ju personal call, judgment personal call. Um, benefit of this is uh, it fits on the dovetail that's there. You don't have to have the mounting bracket. Uh, so uh, like you do on a Telrad, that can be seen as a benefit. Or frankly, some people will see that as a, uh, not a benefit. I think that it... Um, um, depends on your point of view. I think it's a personal choice. Uh, it's uh, I like the reticle better. Uh, the glowing little dots, I think, make it easier to find things uh, in the sky. That's a, a benefit to it as well. Um, it's a uh, um, that's my answer. I think it's a very <laughs> personal choice on that. <laughs> I'm trying to be honest here. Um, you know, the Telrad's still a fine device. Um, I have two of them, and they work great. Uh, I will uh, be uh, adding uh, one of these to uh, my arsenal for a telescope. Uh, the reflex sight can also be mounted on a camera using a hot shoe adapter with a one quarter to twenty bolt. That's correct. It also can be put onto a tripod. Uh, you can get. Um, a tripod, you can put it on a camera hot shoe. There's hot shoes that you can buy that have a one quarter to 20 bolt to put on top of a camera. You could also mount it with that one quarter to 20 bolt uh, in the handle slot of the Explore Scientific telescopes that come with the uh, cradle with a handle. That handle slot or handle is slotted for a one quarter to 20 bolt as well. So you could also mount it there as well. So many mounting options available right there. Um, uh, Astro for Dummies uh, says to Mike Overacker, it's different and offers more unique benefits. Thank you, Astro for Dummies. We appreciate that very much. Uh, so uh, there isn't any more sharp edge images. I think he means sharp edges. And the reticel is nice and easy to see. True, there's no pointy little edges and things to hook your clothes on nearly as well. It also comes with a detachable built-in dew shield so that when you're going to use it, you can take the dew shield off and uh, use it looking up in your skies. And then when you find your object, you can put the detachable dew shield back on real easy. And that dew shield covers up that glass that the red soul reflects off of, uh, keeping it uh, moisture-free and uh, allows you to use the uh, finder. Uh, Mike Overraffer, I have a Telrad for every scope I own, but I'm not afraid to find something new and better. Uh, somebody, and I don't remember who it was, said hello, and I'm sorry I missed your name when I looked down and was going to read it and look down, and there was Alpha another question. Alpha, photo, and video. Alpha, photo, and video said yes. hello. Hello right back to you, Alpha, photo, and video. We appreciate you spending some time with us. Thank so you very I, much. I know Annie has been talking about Mount Wilson with Scott a lot. Mount Wilson with Scott a lot. Hey, that's an interesting nickname, Scott a lot. <laughs> uh, we have Mount Wilson Star Party coming up in October. Uh, it's going to be a lot. Of, we're using the 60-inch telescope, I believe, and we'll be looking at a lot of planets. We have planets galore uh, up, and so planets are going to be the uh, viewing uh, fun. We also have a series of uh, lectures and a, a tour, uh, a plan to go 
uh, to a botanical garden while we're there and do a botanical garden tour while we're out there. Is, is that the Mount Wilson or is that the Oracle? Mount Wilson. No, it's Mount Wilson. Mount Wilson has a botanical garden tour. Yes. Um, that we're going to be uh, spending some time getting a, a, a very personal, customized tour of a botanical garden that Scott just sings the praises of. Uh, beauty, well thought out, well constructed. Uh, just spectacular, very mature botanical garden uh, in the Los Angeles area as well. I'm looking forward to being there. Scott and I will be going out, uh, and it's limited to, I believe, 25 total slots, and not very many left. So, you know, it's going to be July, August, September, October. Time to plan that vacation for the fall and go to beautiful Los Angeles, October in Los Angeles has got to be spectacular because, you know, it's Los Angeles and it's in the fall. has to be pretty. I'm not sure what season that would be in the fall for California, but, you know, there's mud season, fire season, uh, earthquake all the time. You know, people make jokes of all that stuff, but don't want to joke around about national disasters, in, natural disasters in California. So, um <clears throat> What else, Paul? Is there so, anything else you want to talk about? We're working on making our content uh, live 24 Ooh, hours a day. We have a new device that we can load uh, content into, and we're going to be launching a 24-7 channel here from Explore Scientific where we're going to use some of our shows that we've done uh, and loop them so it's 24-7 broadcast out there. And have a rebroadcast of some of our better stuff. Not, not going to be live. Although when we do go live, we'll interrupt wherever we are in that show and go live, and then uh, back to whatever show is in the loop. We'll have some global star parties, some uh, Amazon lives, uh, some product uh, film, video yeah. commercials that you, you know that we've done. I would All like to con- know. We've got. I would like to know what you guys out there in uh, Internet land want to see. And if you have particular episodes that you think should be repeated and pushed out. See, like, eventually we're hoping, like, schools and things like that will just play it. Right? Yeah. Because uh, it's, it's on all the time. And But we need to put the best content forward. So we're always looking to see what you guys are thinking has been our best content. So, sorry about that yawn right there. I went to the ZZ Top concert here locally last night and got to bed late. It's going to be tough because I'm going to Kenny Chesney tonight. Good. And uh, it'll be even a tougher night. And if I didn't have to go to First Friday uh, and do science demonstrations at a community festival here on Friday night, I would be seeing Willie Nelson, but I've got to go do my commitment to the nonprofit I'm on. So, Three nights of concerts are going to wear me out. I'm not nearly as old, <laughs> young as I used to be. Uh, Mike Wiesner said, the Huntington Library and Gardens is truly amazing. Thank you, Mike, for that. So, so. what do you think about this going live stuff, Kent? I mean, going live... 24 hours a day. Hey, it's about content. It's about making your content available anytime people want it. Uh, people wants it anytime people want it it's getting it out there uh, in different formats at different times and you know it's just about just finding new ways to get our information out there to the public Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how it goes and like like uh, paul asked about you know seeing what content works and what content uh gets people watching will be interesting to see, and we'll be experimenting with that as we go along. So, uh, we have visitors in the showroom right now. I'm not sure who they are. Do I want to bring them over here on stage? No. Let's see. No, Robert doesn't want to come on camera, and no, Tricia doesn't want to come Robert. on camera. So I can't drag either one of them over here and get them in front of the camera. <laughs> so, uh, although it'd be fun, but. Uh, <laughs> you, you might get him. So uh, Robert said, "Yeah, wrap it up. Get out of here." So anyway, um, I've done 
what I can do. So I think I'm going to go ahead and well, what sign off. Exactly the benefits of Explorer Alliance beyond, you know, just the hundred bucks you get back. The extended care on your products, no fault extended care. You know, if you're an Explorer Alliance member and, uh, uh, as Scott likes to put it, you run over your telescope, you send your telescope to us, and uh, uh, we send you a new one. If it's in stock, we send you a new one. If it's not in stock, when it comes into stock, we send you a new one. Uh, quite a um, membership of, of uh, a benefit of membership. And say you have five Explore Scientific Telescopes and 15 or 20 eyepieces, that 100 bucks covers it all every bit of it uh, for the annual, for the term of that $100. So if you join today, it'll be good for 365 days. Quite what is it, about eight something a month? Yeah, something like that. You know, and there's, there is a way you can pay for it. I believe that you can, there's a, we have a company where you uh, pay for it month by month and they, 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 but they basically give us the membership, the money for the membership up front, then you pay them uh, over the course of the contract, and you know, off you go. So, well, anyway. also too, we have the thing called Skies Up, right? Right, Skies Up magazine. In fact, the editor of Skies Up magazine was just in here. That was Trish, and she might have come on if I would have twisted her arm a little bit, but I didn't try twisting her arm much. So, so yep, tell Skies us Up magazine is Skies a global Up. magazine um, out there. Mike Overacker. Uh, Explore Scientific has to be one of the best companies for customer support I have ever dealt with. Well, Mike, some days we do really good, and some days we struggle sometimes, uh, like all companies do, but we try really hard. And Scott makes it very, very clear to everyone that, uh, you know, the customers own the company, and you got to take care of the customers. And that means being available. Uh, you know, uh, we're live Monday through Friday at least for an hour and a half. Uh, every day and a lot of times two and a half or three hours and some days six or eight hours a day live broadcast people don't believe it scott roberts will put out his personal cell phone number and say it on live on youtube facebook twitch whatever platform he's broadcast on and actually there was somebody one time that that didn't believe it and called the number and scott answered it live on the broadcast that was great fun. So we're looking at a copy of uh, Skies Up magazine right now. It's a digital magazine. We also do print up a few of them. We have a, a nice digital printing press here that we print catalogs and stuff on. Uh, uh, edited from uh, uh, articles submitted from around the world on all sorts of topics. Uh, a very uh, you know beautiful photography. Uh, really well written, well researched uh, articles that range from, you know, some pretty arcane stuff to just general um, types of uh, astronomy how to. Um, very, very cool stuff. And Paul's just flipping through right now. But that well, would be. I didn't the, think you would be able to read it. What's Up Magazine. So. There's a Quebec model of lighting. This is an older issue. What is this? Is this the May, the first quarter issue? I think this is the first quarter of the year issue. So, I yeah, so I don't remember talking about that. Well, it might have been last, last fall. I don't remember. So, anyway, you can uh, you get a membership for that. You can subscribe to it online. Uh, if you can't figure out how to get subscription to it, uh, just email us. Uh, Open a, open a case in our support sneak file, and we can take care of you that way. Paul, I'm gonna wrap it up. I can't I've got work to do, huh? <laughs> it's stuck. Paul, Paul's got a stuck graphic. He can't get a big hammer out. There we go. That's how you get it away. You, you just put me in front of the camera and blow it back up. All right, <laughs> friends. Thank you for watching. Tomorrow, uh, I will not be here. I forgot to go to a funeral. So Tyler will be handling the uh, 1.30 and 2 o'clock duties as well as his traditional uh, Friday afternoon broadcast on um, astrophotography. Focus. Focus on astrophotography with brain dead. 
started thinking about the funeral and, you know, don't like funerals, but it's one of those things you got to go do. Uh, they want to so, see anyway. a video tour of the store. See a video tour of the ES store would be cool. We have just, we're in the final stages of completely re-engineering the store, moving everything around, moving hanging panels and shelves and everything else. It's in pretty good shape today, but uh, when it gets done, we probably can do that uh, next week or the week after. We can probably work that up. I uh, have to figure out how to do a live shot with Paul. Uh, easy. But easy. we could do it with a phone v yeah. and then come into the uh, – sling it in into his board. Yeah, we can do that. Uh, that'll be fun. We should, and, you uh, should do the store, one from the bird blind at Lake Fayetteville. Sure, we could do that sometime. When, you set your phone uh, up. What, Wait until the fall when it's cool. Use the v yeah. yeah. Do it in the fall and when it's earlier in the evening and, you know, cool and birds are out and do that. Yeah, we can do that. That'll be yeah. fun. And we've done that from a star party before, and we'll be doing that from other star parties as mm -hmm. well. So uh, the store uh, is a big benefit to us. It's frankly, uh, we don't have that many com people come in, but what it's good for is we have one of everything out there pretty well. And it's really good for customer service people when somebody calls and starts talking about a specific spot, part of a specific telescope. Yeah. We can go out there and lay our hands on it and look at it. But we got it's a always large fun. Lost Mandy out there, too, I think. Oh, yeah. There's a big old Lost Mandy mount out there. Uh, G11 with our PMC8 system installed on it. There's a 20 inch Dobsonian Telus there. All of our uh, Essential Series and FC100 telescopes are out there. Um, all, many of our uh, toy and educational line telescopes are out there. We don't have a big display of eyepieces out there. Well, I stole uh, it. But, stole it I stole the display. It's behind you now. Uh, well, yeah, but no, you well, see? that was in the Thank cabinet. You. Yeah, it's right. Right <laughs> there. Yeah. I stole it. Uh, so, anyway. Paul, let's wrap this up. All right. 4.37. I've uh, not fulfilled my hour, but I'm not going to. So I can go do some stuff before I have to go off to the Kenny Chesney concert tonight. going to be cool. It's low last night was uh, 61 degrees. which 58 is 58 this morning. 58 this morning, which crazy for the end of yeah. June. That just means uh, August is going to be a, like a we're thousand. Gonna, we're gonna, Paul, you're exactly right. Mother Nature is going to punish us for yes. the last few nights of cool weather. We will be punished in July and August. Yes. So in, enjoy the cupcake because all the hard work, in this case all the heat, is coming soon. Antho so, Shant wants to know what telescope is the white one. What Wants to know what? Paul, uh, wants to know what? Let's see. I, um, I'm looking for the comment here. I'll put it up on the screen so you can see it. Send. Yeah. Ento Shant. What telescope is the white one? Uh, it's going to be over there. That is, this white one back over here, is a first light uh, AR, so it's an acromat, meaning it has... Uh, Two lenses in it. It's a doublet, uh, 102 millimeter diameter, so it's 102 millimeters across the glass surface, and it's got a 600 millimeter focal length. So it's an AR uh, 102 600, and it's on a twilight nano mount. Let's see, I can't. It's wedged in between a couple of uh, uh, light stands. I don't think I can get it out easily. But it's a first light AR-102-600. I can show it to you. Let's see. I'm going to go to achromatic doublets on the screen that I've got here. And now 102-600PN. It's this telescope right here. Paul, yeah. you, got that? you got that going? There we, there go. we go. That telescope right there. Is the telescope that you're looking at over, uh, right over here off the screen? It's the uh, uh, 102 millimeter, meter, 102 millimeter aperture. 
600 millimeter focal length. It comes with an inch and a quarter uh, eyepiece, an inch and a quarter diagonal. Uh, you cannot use two inch eyepieces on this telescope. They don't fit. Red dot finder and a standard left, right, up, down tripod called the Twilight Nano. Dead simple to use. You don't have to learn how to do polar alignment or anything else. You just plop the telescope down, put the tripod down, put the telescope on it, put in an eyepiece, get your red dot aligned. And, you know, if you need help doing that, ask, and we can talk about that. But get your red dot aligned to where it's looking at the same thing your telescope's looking at. So now when you look through the red dot finder, you can <laughs> point it at whatever you want to see in the sky. And if you've done your job well, what you pointed at is going to be in the eyepiece of your telescope. A really uh, a little vital piece of kit is a great finder scope, uh, or in this case, a little red dot finder uh, serves the purpose. So there was an interesting question. Thank you, sir, for that question. Uh, you also see over my shoulder the Explore Scientific wall clock. How about that? Let's talk about that for a second. I'm not sure F11. It's going to be scroll up outdoor quit it outdoor it's not I hate it when oh weather and time there we go weather and time click there scroll down here lots of weather and time products I know that uh, uh, a number of our watchers our viewers uh, have used them where's that clock we have all sorts of weather and time pro there we go 39.95 the Explore scientific wall clock uh, it's a clock it's an Explore scientific clock it's a beautiful clock for 39.95 uh, has sets silent itself. movement it sets itself Radio controlled with WWVB in the United States, Canada, and Mexico. And it's uh, right. I'm looking at it. And, and the time right. is just always right because it syncs itself with WWVB, uh, which is a radio station produced by the National Institute of Time and Standard NITS, or NITS, National Institute of Time and Standards. Uh, okay, so Norm Hughes, my first refractor was an AR-102. Visually through the scope was stunning. Astrophotography, well, was a doublet. Had to learn to deal with the fringing. Yes, the fringing you talk about is chromatic aberration. What that means is when light goes through two lenses, and it's a crown and flint, crown and flint, two different types of glass, the light goes through, it acts as a prism and starts breaking the light into its components, color components. Well... Red's on one side, blue's on the other. So on bright objects, you see some red fringing or blue fringing around them. Uh, so that chromatic aberration, you have to learn how to deal with either in processing or if you're just shooting black and white, it's not nearly as apparent. And then you just take three pictures and assign them red, blue, green and create a, a, uh, can create a, a 3D color or a three color image, an RGB image as well. So uh, we add a, third piece of glass making a triplet and that third piece of glass generally fluorite glass uh, gets the light that's breaking up into uh, the rainbow gets all that light lined back up into its constituent uh, so it's no longer constituent colors it's white light and that white light then is uh, much better for fast photography and for visual sometimes if the chroma Chromatic aberration really bothers you, but there you go. Uh, good uh, discussion as well. So, you know, treat yourself to a midsummer's treat and uh, order one of these Explore Scientific Clocks and give us a review. It's a beautiful, elegant design, uh, which is one of our design, you know, parameters here. We want things to look like they came from Explore Scientific. We want there to be a a design sense, a design um, guiding principle to where things look like they came from uh, Explore Scientific. All right, Paul, bye it back, is time. Bye bye.
Bye bye, Paul. Everybody, thank you for your gift of your time and spending it with us. I love the questions. Thank you very much. Um, and, uh, you know, I love somebody asking a question about the telescope behind me. That's awesome. We appreciate it very much. Again, uh, I won't be here Friday or Tuesday. We will not be in the office Monday. So there will be no broadcasts on Monday next week, and they'll resume on Tuesday. Until then, uh, for Explore Scientific, Paul Newton over in the control booth. Paul G. All Newton. The, Paul Golly Newton. The G stands Paul for Golly. G. Paul G. Golly Newton. Uh, stands for goodness gracious. I'm trying to Newton. get a camera over here, but I just I, I, really I need think a cable. His, I really think his 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 middle initial is F Fig, so it'd be Paul Fig Newton. I need a cable um, that fits that cannon, and I could put a, ca a camera over here. And boy, that would be so exciting! I know the masses would jump for joy. Uh, yeah. Anyway, and you would Paul, because Paul, you, I'm tired of you calling me the disemboweled voice. He's 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 not the disemboweled voice anymore. He's just the disembodied voice. Okay. He's just a voice from the ether. He's not. There is time he was disemboweled, but not now. It's that's that's in the past. Anyway, <laughs> it's been a great week. Uh, not looking forward to tomorrow. Having to go to a funeral, but tis the way it goes. Yep. So I will see everybody next week. Paul's going to keep flipping switches and banging on buttons and yep. making all the magic happen behind the scenes. We appreciate it very much. Again, thank you for your time. It is a gift you give us, and we truly appreciate it. Bye-bye, everybody.